Yes, yes, guys, everything bite sized there. I hope you're all doing well. Today, we're back with another AI powered choose your own adventure video, and we're using Grok from Twitter. What I'm going to do is try and get it to put me into the universe of The Road, the movie. See what happens. I'll show you the prompt that I wrote out earlier. Let's play a choose your own adventure text RPG set in the movie The Road, where there are cannibals in a post apocalyptic world and you've got a pistol with five bullets in it. Make it very easy to die and give me three options to choose from, as well as letting me make up my own. Let's see what it comes up with. Come on, Grok. You find yourself in a desolate post-apocalyptic world, much like the setting of the road. The air is thick with the stench of decay and the landscape is barren, save for the occasional abandoned car or crumbling building. You clutch your pistol tightly. The weight of the five bullets is a small comfort in this unforgiving world. As you walk, you come across a group of people huddled around a small fire. They seem to be cooking something in a large pot and the aroma, while not exactly appetizing, is better than the constant smell of death that surrounds you. Wow, this is deep. You have three options. Approach the group cautiously, keeping your pistol at the ready. B, try and sneak around the group, avoiding any potential conflict. C, turn around and head in the opposite direction, not wanting to risk any danger. I'm going to try and alternatively come up with your own option. I'm going to sneak up on them, pull my pistol out and rob them for weapons and ammunition every man for himself you know sneak up on them pull my pistol out and rob them for weapons and ammunition let's see what happens i'm probably just gonna get shot you decide to sneak up on the group your heart pounding in your chest as you get closer, you can see that the people are gaunt and desperate looking, and the pot they're huddled around contains what appears to be an arm. You pull out your pistol, aiming it at the group. Drop your weapons and give me your ammunition, you demand. The group freezes, their eyes wide with fear and hunger. One of them, a man with a scraggly beard, slowly reaches for his own gun. You have two options. Shoot the man before he can grab his weapon. B. Warn him not to move, keeping your pistol trained on him. Say you'll shoot him in the stomach if he so much as touches the weapon and he'll die in agony for days that's a bit deep it's the end of the world though guys so I said, say you'll shoot him in the stomach if he so much as touches the weapon and he'll die in agony for days. You keep your pistol trained on a man with the scraggly beard. Your voice steady as you say, if you so much as touch that weapon, I'll shoot you in the stomach. You'll die in agony over the course of days. Now, drop your weapons and give me your ammunition. The man's hand hovers over his gun, his eyes flicking between you and the other members of the group. You can see the fear in his eyes, but also the desperation. You have two options. Shoot the man in the stomach to make an example of him. B, wait to see what he does, your finger on the trigger. Let's go with B. Let's go with B. There might be a little bit of a western showdown here, ladies and gentlemen. Bit of a hoedown. You wait, your finger on the trigger, ready to shoot if the man makes a move. The tension is palpable. The air is thick with fear and desperation. The man's hand shakes slightly, but he slowly withdraws it from his gun. He nods, a defeated look on his face. Okay, he says, take what you want. The rest of the group looks on, their faces pale and drawn. They look like they haven't eaten in days. You have two options, take their weapons and ammunition, leaving them to their fate. B, take what you need and leave them with enough to survive. Uh, they're eating an arm, I don't, like, you can have the arm, I don't want the arm. Take their weapons and ammunition, leaving them to their fate. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go deep on this. Take the, so I'll put A but knife fight them all with pistol in hand. So he's got one pistol trained on him and um, in case it gets too political. And then he's got um, in head. You decide to take their weapons and ammunition, leaving them to their fate. As you reach for their supplies, the man with a scraggly beard lunges at you with a knife. You have two options, shoot him in the head or B, use your pistol to block his attack and fight back. Alternatively, you can come up with your own option. Okay, at this point, I'm just gonna have to shoot the geezer. I wonder how much weapons and ammunition I got off them. 
Either way, it's like a free kill because I didn't have that ammunition before. You pull the trigger and the man with the scraggly beard collapses to the ground, a bullet hole in his forehead. The rest of the group scatters, their cries echoing in the desolate landscape. You take their weapons and ammunition, leaving them with nothing. As you walk away, the weight of your actions heavy on your shoulders, you can't help but wonder if there was another way. But in this world, it's kill or be killed. You continue on your journey, your supplies replenish, but your spirit more weary than ever. Oh, so I've got to add more to the story. So I put, you bump into a frantically scared woman and child getting chased by cannibals with melee weapons and you intervene to protect them. You hear screams in the distance and your heart sinks. You know that sound all too well. You run towards the noise, your pistol at the ready. As you round the corner, you see a woman and a child being chased by a group of cannibals wielding melee weapons. The woman is screaming, her eyes wide with terror and the child is crying. You have two options. A. Shoot the cannibals to protect the woman and child. B. Try to distract the cannibals, drawing their attention away from the woman and child. Alternatively, you can come up with your own option. I'm going to put shout at them to drop their weapons. Otherwise, they're getting shot. Shot. Otherwise they're getting shot. Let's see what happens. Shoot. Shout at them to drop their weapons. Otherwise they're getting shot. You shout at the cannibals. Your voice booming in the quiet air. Drop your weapons or I'll shoot. The cannibals pause. Their eyes flickering towards you. They look at each other. And for a moment you think they might actually listen. But then one of them lunges at you with a rusty machete. You have two options. Shoot the cannibals or dodge the attack and fight back. I'm going to put... Yeah, I'm just gonna put shoot the cannibals. There's no, there's no, no other option at this point. You pull the trigger and the cannibals fall one by one. Their bodies hitting the ground with a sickening thud. The woman and child look at you, their eyes wide with shock and gratitude. I put don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. Do you want to? travel with me don't worry i'm not gonna hurt you do you want to travel with me the woman looks at you her eyes filled with fear and uncertainty but then she nods a small smile on her lips yes i think we'd like that the child who has been quiet this whole time looks up at you with big hopeful eyes are you going to keep us safe he asks you nod your heart softening i'll do my best you say it's dangerous out here but we'll look out for each other and so you continue on your journey a small group of survivors in a world full of death and despair but at least you're not alone i'm gonna put it's not giving me options but i'm gonna put check how much weaponry and ammo you have Your pistol with four bullets left, a rusty machete taken from one of the cannibals, a small amount of ammunition for your pistol, a few cans of food scavenged from the group you robbed earlier. It's not much, but it's enough to keep you going for a while. You'll need to find more supplies soon, but for now you're grateful for what you have. Okay, I'm going to kind of do what happens in the movie. You get shot in... In the leg okay wait leg oh come on man you get shot in the leg with a crossbow but manage to shoot the assailant before he can reload You feel a sharp pain in your leg and you look down to see a crossbow bolt protruding from your thigh. The assailant, a man with a wild look in his eyes, is reloading his crossbow. You have two options. A. Shoot the assailant before he can reload. B. Try to pull out the crossbow bolt and apply pressure to your wound. Well, yeah, obviously shoot the assailant. Obviously. You raise your pistol and shoot the assailant before he can reload. He falls to the ground, a bullet hole in his chest. You take a moment to catch your breath, the pain in your leg throbbing. You need to deal with the wound, but you're in the middle of nowhere. You have two options. 
A. Try to pull out the crossbow bolt and apply pressure to your wound. B. Keep moving, hoping to find some form of shelter or help. Pour your emergency whiskey on the wound before bandaging bandaging it with fabric you rip off your jacket you grit your teeth and pull out the crossbow the pain is excruciating but you manage to get through it you pour your emergency whiskey on the wound the alcohol burning your flesh you rip off a piece of your jacket and use it to bandage the wound, tying it tightly to stop the bleeding. The pain is still there, but it's manageable. You have two options. Keep moving, hoping to find some form of shelter or help. B, rest for a while, giving your wound time to heal. I'm going to go with B, rest. B, let's see what happens. You decide to rest for a while, giving your wound time to heal. You find a spot that's relatively safe and set up a small camp. The woman and child help you as best they can and you're grateful for their presence. The night passes slowly, the pain in your leg a constant reminder of your vulnerability. But you're alive, that's what matters. In the morning you feel a little better. The wound is still sore but it's not as bad as it was. You pack up your camp and continue on your journey. Your new companions by your side. I'm going to put the wound gets infected wound gets infected not inverted infected that would be weird a wound getting inverted <coughs> that's kind of like a what's what are them things called hernias that's like a wound inverted the wound in your leg starts to fester the skin around it turning red and hot to the touch it's infected and you know you need to find some sort of medical help soon you have two options keep moving hoping to find some form of shelter or help b try to find some herbs or plants that might help with the infection alternatively you can come up with your own option i'm gonna say get the woman to amputate the leg with the rusty machete with the rusty machete the woman looks at you her eyes wide with shock amputate your leg are you sure you nod your face grim it's the only way to stop the infection from spreading i don't want to die out here the woman takes a deep breath and nods she takes the rusty machete and begins to cut through your leg the pain is excruciating but you grit your teeth and bear it finally the deed is done your leg is gone but the infection has been stopped you're alive but the journey ahead will be much harder now you have two options keep moving hoping you find some form of shelter or help b rest for a while giving your body time to adjust to the loss of your leg yeah let's go with b b but see what comes up now B. You are bleeding heavily, so the woman puts the machete into the fire to seal the wound and stop the bleeding. The woman puts the rusty machete into the fire, heating it until it's red hot. She then presses it against your stump, cauterizing the wound. Oh, that's how you spot. No wonder I couldn't spell it. That's mental. Cauterizing the wound. The smell of burning flesh fills the air and you scream in agony, but the bleeding stops and the infection is gone. You're alive, but the journey ahead will be much harder now. You have two options. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put around a dozen bandits pop out of nowhere yeah let's see what it just says with that you hear a rustle in the bushes and suddenly a dozen bandits pop out of nowhere they're armed with knives clubs and other makeshift weapons you have two options try to fight them off and b try to negotiate with them you're not going to be able to negotiate with them i'll put shoot them until you run out of ammo so guys till you run out of ammo you raise your pistol and start shooting the bandits fall one by one their bodies hitting the ground with a sickening thud but there are too many of them and soon your pistol is empty the remaining bandits rush at you their weapons raised you're out of options you have two op <laughs> you're out of options and then it says you have two options try to fight them off with your bare hands now you're not going to be able to do that with a with a leg i'm just going to go accept my fate gracefully 
I'm gonna get eaten. You close your eyes, accepting your fate. The bandits descend upon you, their weapons raised. But then, a miracle happens. The woman and child who you thought were lost come out of nowhere and fight off the bandits. They're armed with the weapons you took from the cannibals and they're fighting for their lives. In the end, the bandits are defeated and you're alive. You're injured and you lost a leg, but you're alive. Wow, that's amazing. They, they come and got my back too. I'll go with A because it keeps telling me to go A. So try and find some sort of shelter. How can I how can I get there when I'm hopping around on one leg though? You continue on your journey, your new companions by your side. The road ahead is long and difficult, but you're not alone. You found a family in this desolate world and together you'll survive. Okay, I'll leave it at that. That's a happy ending. Well, as happy as can be given the context of like the end of the world and cannibalism and stuff. But yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. You've been locked into everything bite size. Check out my other content and check out my other content like this and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.